韩国的替补队员，或者说韩国某些不太知名的队员，然、嗯、后被我们挖掘了。对，被我们挖掘了。其实昨天我跟就是说是，呃，就是今天参加比赛，就是说战队队员吃饭呢。嗯就我有一两个朋友嘛，就在里面，然后他也跟我聊，他说现在就是说是，哦，有那种就是说是挖过来那种，就是平时都是跟飞客对打的，就是、啊、就是那种在韩国叫试训生啊，叫练习生那种。不是，他就是平时就是纯粹就是就跟飞客一个水平的，就跟他对打的，对对对，真的跟飞客五五开。好，现在班水已经开始，蓝色方 VZ， 红色方是 YG。嗯、啊，没没有搬蓝博，那还是选择跟之前如出一辙，只是啊，就、啊啊、天瑞麦 Team 就觉得就是说是。上盘，呃，就是说是不是，就不是正常的。果然就放那儿，哎呦！秒选了这个那儿。我记得第三手考虑了好久啊，然后他。And welcome back, everybody. We got our last game of our first best of three. We've kicked off what a great day of Chinese League of Legends here. So the LPL Spring. Promotion tournament to continue, and of course, this page I'm joined by Razzle Plasm and Vici Gaming here versus Young Glory in a what should be, all things considered, as a pretty epic game of three. Oh, it's going to be amazing! Now, of course, we have lost. Speaking of amazing, <laughs> we've lost the Lee Sin due to the bans. Rengar is back up, but I'm not sure if he wants it. It's going to be an interesting idea to see what. He can pick up here. Carrie、um, has first picked the Nar along with the. YG going for、uh, Braum and Jace, so that's going to be solid. Oh like, man, I just saw. But we actually jumped in a bit late, so we are going to go through <laughs> just a couple of picks here as well. The Bansi for Vich Gaming. They're on the blue side here for our last game. John Arise and Lucian are there three with Zillion, Lucian, like you mentioned there, as and the Thresh as well for Young Glory. And Nah has made it through. We've seen him banned in both games so far. And、uh, Nas is looking to be a pretty strong, pretty strong champion all around. People love playing him as this big bully top laner. That's really a tank when you want him to be, which is what counts. Despite having a pretty、uh, touch and go passive here, as Caitlyn and Kazuo could round out the first five picks here of this draft. Raz, Chinese League of Legends, man, what are you excited about here in this draft? Because we've seen、Ooh. fantastic games so far. I'm just excited to see what the response is to the Nar top because we've seen a lot of interesting responses. Of course,、uh, as I've mentioned in the past. The Morgana top just completely stomping out the Nar. Now, of course, Nar once he gets his items going, he can take out that matchup really well. But it's just based a lot on interesting. Like I think we're gonna see an Aurelia honestly, because that's a really good. Like I wouldn't say counter, but it can deal really well with Nar. But we do have the lock on the、uh, Corky and Hope. Yeah, and the Nar、uh, Rengar actually, no, Rengar. Yeah. Rengar and、uh, <laughs> yeah, was dropping for a second, but don't swap it over. And there's Corky Rengar for our third and fourth picks there for YG. I almost hope they would just pick Morgana as a flex, yeah, because they could play it support if they wanted to. We've seen a little bit of that already in today's series, but、uh, instead we'll hold on to our picks here and、uh, see what we want to go get done. He could play Rengar top as well, but probably last picking this top lane. It seems like、uh, YG and Carry. I mean, it's funny we've almost traded two top lane games here for both these teams. Star had a great game in game two on that Rumble, really coming in, and、uh, Carry had a fantastic game when he's Aurelia to start things off as well. Rumble is still open, by the way, but Nas a pretty different champion to have to play against because he's such a bully. This would be almost hilarious to me, by the way. They are hovering Morgana right now for VG, just to pick it to potentially take it away from Young Glory. It's funny, I can't believe me even saying that, but it is going to be more Morg there under the support role there for VG. Yeah, and as as much as I like like love pushing out the Morgana, it's honestly just like a thing that Team Me has done so often. Which, by the way, watch the next LSPL split. That's something you're going to be seeing quite a bit. Team Me's like excellent. Compositions that you can see, and not, they sometimes they have problems in like executing it, but it's really really solid when it does come out. And of course now we're,、um, yeah, these picks and bands are coming out. He is have it is the Morgana support here most definitely, but it looks like there are some technical issues perhaps. Yeah, it looks like they're just sorting something there over at the event site. Unfortunately, didn't get any hiring, which we did see briefly hovered over. I'm not actually sure if they completed champ select either. So I have to say, looks like we do have some of the players having a chat to some of the refs. One of the players over on YG might have an issue with their computer, but that's okay. Can review the draft we've seen so far, at least. I believe we didn't have the last pick for Young Glory. Is the、that's、only thing、player. we're missing in that particular draft. Yeah, so that top player is still coming in. So. It was interesting that they left their top laner for the last pick because they already like straight from the first pick they already knew that Nara was up. So I guess they really it could be a special pick since it's they're really it's really depending off of I guess the support. So 
now that of course Morgana came out and there's the threat of a uh, hard engage kind of like CC top laner is probably lost. I'm really expecting a an Aurelia, but mm. Mm, I, I'm I'm not sure what start is comfortable with honestly. So I th I think with Rumble open. The thought here for YG might be just to uh, see the whole comp before we end up picking a top laner. Because starters we've seen has been kind of hot and cold just in the first few games. And that's not a huge sample size, to be fair. But just from what we've seen so far, it almost feels like Start wants to make sure that he's comfortable. Oh, actually, oh, there's already a pick is there? Oh, okay. So they probably just remade the... Oh, okay, mm. one of the picks might have been a filler or something. Okay, so this yeah. Rumble's actually already been picked up here for Young Glory. And, oh, no, that was their last week, and they're picking Braum. That makes sense, because they've okay, already so picked they probably, yeah, they in order. remade the entire room. So, yeah, yes. there we go. That's the Rumble pick for the last pick. Yeah, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. Since start play Rumble every single game, actually, so far in this best of three. And he's looked fine in both games. Excellent, of course, in game two with the good stuff, but looks still very strong in game one, despite the fact that YG couldn't finish that game out for themselves. So... Very strong, very comfortable pick clearly here for start as well. It's interesting to see these picks really like travel between team to team. Um, start has really just held on to the Rumble for all three games. But the Kha'Zix, the Rengar, and the, of course, the Jace and the uh, Zerith has really just has traveled across here for a little while. So let's we'll see how it works out for both of these teams. Same comps really coming out. So... Oh, I, I'm I'm really hyped. I don't know who's gonna win this one, but it's gonna it's definitely gonna be good, and I expect a lot of fights. Oh yes, I think that's <laughs> the same thing we can say already, just based on how we've seen these games play out. These yeah. two teams love to fight each other, mm. so uh, yeah, we're probably gonna see a lot of that. Curious to see if any super uh, cheesy level one stuff maybe comes out, but I think we're gonna play it pretty casual, pretty safe here in the last game here. Remember, of course, these teams, neither team will be eliminated from what happens here as well. It's, uh, you still get a chance to play in the lower bracket. Obviously, you'd like to continue on and not have to drop down and play what is now a single elim elimination tournament for you, but there is still a little bit of a safety net there for these teams if that does happen. So we'll see here. I actually have to ask you, though, just specifically about the mid lane matchup here, which we did see in game two, and we're going to see again here. I'm not personally convinced that Zerith into Jace is where you want to be, but clearly it's something that's comfortable for Vici Gaming's mid laner Zan. He's picked it again now, I believe, into Jace, mm -hmm. but what do you think, Raz, in terms of how that mid lane matchup plays out? It's. I feel like they're just looking past the lane, because if Zerith can get past the laning phase, which is a bit iffy, like he can poke him, he can poke the Jace out, and it really comes down to how well it synergizes with the Rengar. Once Rengar is able to lock someone down... Oh, actually, the Rengar is on... Okay, different sides, different teams. That yep. well, GG. <laughs> <The Rengar. laughs> okay. So yeah, they don't even have the Rengar pick. So actually, now that I think about it, it's kind of iffy. I'm not so sure about that. Hmm. Because the Rengar with the Zerith pick is actually really strong, but I'm not so sure on the Kha'Zix front on that one. I mean, I do like the follow-up pick potential. I actually love that Moon's back on Morgana, by the way. His binds were on point in game one here. So we actually did this game as well, by the way. He beat you on the, the Blue Hands hide for the last game. 55 seconds in here to our level one. We're just having a bit of... Uh a few blows traded back and forth here as well. But Vici back on the blue side here for this one. YG over on the red side here for their game. Vici did win game one with Young Glory, answered with game two. And we've had uh, some pretty action-packed moments so far to say. And I'm personally super excited. Now we talked a little bit about the mid lane. This, nah. This is what I'm all about this game, at least in the early in the early stages. Because he was banned twice already. Seen a big like, just kind of surge in play Uh pretty much in a post-Worlds environment, because of course he was disabled at Worlds and couldn't see any play here. And Carry has played so well so far, just in the top lane, even against a player like Start, who's looked very strong as well. I'm ready to see what this Nar can do, man, because this is quite the champion if you can master it. Oh, oh, is this what I think it is? Is this the lane swap? Both teams seem to have lane swapped here. Hmm. I mean, they might have just swapped like computers. Maybe they're swapping their top lane in their ID. It's like, you know what? Let's let's figure this out and do it instead. But you're right, Caitlyn is actually up towards the top lane there for Vici, and Corky and Braum are both at the top there for Young Glory. This will be quite the travel time for Morgana, though. So if she's expecting to lane with the Morgana, I mean with the uh, cat, uh, Caitlyn, she's going to miss out on quite a bit of experience. I'm not so sure if I like that idea. The advantage will go to Braum, Corky, on that one. 
Yeah, I'm actually also quite confused. Though. I feel like if you're going to leave your support down towards the bottom lane, you need to either late invade with it or just have Morgana join Caitlyn earlier. Because, yeah, Bobo's going to struggle a bit here. I mean, the way he's pushing in now, we did have a push opted here for Young Glory. So they're not going to lose out too much. But what is all, what was going to be a passive lane for them anyway just becomes super, super passive. Yeah, this was interesting. I think what happened, I think what happened was Morgana expected the 2v1 and by doing so she wanted to really come go with the Nar and really just protect his laning phase and so he can have that lane advantage yep. and so like because Caitlyn can safely uh, 1v1 the rumble and just farm it out but that actually worked against them it won't be too big of a deal honestly the level 2 they're really close to um, they're, by, they're really close by their turrets so level 2 won't, will be, won't be that significant yeah, and just on there a second as well. That's one of the coolest strategies that kind of evolved. We saw quite a bit of it during Worlds as well, and we're seeing it here. Uh, getting your carry farmed up by just leaving them in either a 1v0 or a 1v1 situation in the top lane, and then making your own duo lane uh, with your support and your top laner instead. Just kind of swapping things around a bit. It's kind of funny. That's what happened in like pre-season 1 and season 1, if you guys can remember back that long. But I think Nara especially is a champion that is actually really good in 2v2s because he's kind of like a mini AD carry. Yeah, he is, Nar is like a jack of all trades of which he does. He can just, he has so many options depending on how well he does in a game. He can go uh, put his carry pants on, he could just like build damage Trinity Force, uh, Blade of the Rune King, or if he's like feeling like he needs to be that brute force tank in the game, he can just go straight tank and it's, it's you can do so much with that pick. Yeah, I think Carry probably wants to just be a tank for his team because they yeah. kind of need a primary tank, and uh, Nara is just very good in that in that spot. But I'm curious to see, especially if he gets ahead at all, whether or not he does something that PDD used to do a lot as the top lane and just kind of be like, <laughs> eh, trying to build damage. All right, that's the most. Thing. That's honestly what I miss about PDD the most. It's like he's on Renekton. <laughs> I'm just gonna go full damage. Yeah, yep, let's it's, just yeah. Get that IE, possibly. <laughs> so. Yeah, I used, we used to joke about... Uh, before Ghostblade was actually a common item, we used to joke that the PDD Ghostblade was the biggest insult he could he could send you. Because if he's building a Ghostblade, he was ahead here as well. He's actually going to fight this Renga Karzik. Pops over the top there looking for first blood and plenty of damage to follow. Doesn't even need the last auto attack. Beautifully played. A great stun there for Zan as well. Going to get aggressive onto this chase. And VG Gaming come up with first blood, I believe, for the third time in a row. Yep, uh, VG Gaming can and have had perfect early games. Just getting that first blood, just getting the advantage in general. Like YG has hasn't been able to imp impress in the early game. Their laning phases have generally been pretty weak, except for maybe Dian Gun. And well, right now he's actually Dian Gun struggling a little bit in this matchup. He's a bit, he's like five CS behind, but that's not much. Um, but yeah, this is like rank, like Rumble's far behind in that matchup. He's like 10 CS behind, and he's actually getting bullied out too. So that's not, that ain't something you want. Ugh. Yeah, Karen's just like, hey buddy, how you doing? Hyper is just such an annoying ability in mini now form. Mm. Hey, it's Megan. I'm just going to bully you around. It's, again, such a funky play style, but even this matchup, like, Nara's, I guess, semi-range kind of like Rumble is, and he's more than happy just to fight, even in Mega Nara form here. And Carrie, in fact, everyone from VG is doing quite nicely here in the early stages of this game, and Rengo is rotating up towards the top. Let's see what happens here. Oof, I am ready for this one. Here we go. Who's yeah, Rengo's going to jump in. Morgana, oh, needs to have trouble. Ooh. Boba, little bit indecisive. That bolt adjust missing there as Moon jukes it now. Here's the TP coming in for carry. Good exhaust as well. Might be able to pick up a kill. Sir's actually forced to go back. Start TP back up as well. Moon, though, does go down as Rengo's going to clean up that kill. Now carry forced to hop away there on that. Now does get out, and no one else is going to die. In fact, Kha'Zix is rotating here as well. Xerath also has his ultimate if he wants to try and get on that one. And all of a sudden, eight people running up towards the top lane. YG, though, should be okay, oh. but Chinese League of Legends, man. When one <laughs> goes in, the whole team is going to be there. Yeah, they yeah you got to... Like, they get a 2v1 or 2v2 gank. They have 4v4 gank. You got to expect, uh, people, like, men raining from the sky that the TP is just coming in. Oh, and down he goes. Rengar goes down once again. He's not having a good time this game. But he, honestly, let's just talk about that, the start of that engagement with Morgana, because that was... Morgana, even though she was the only one who died in that team fight in general, like, like of course, Rengar died later on, but in that team fight, she played that super well because Rengar had one or like he had an option of two people to really bullet strike, and he was just waiting and trying to bait out the Morgana shield, and she wasn't taking that bait. She wasn't, and at the end she kind of did, but the bullet strike missed, and it just took too long for Rengar to really set set something up. 
Yeah, and that's the thing is when in this sort of meta in particular, you know that there are extended fights coming. All the time, people yep. are going to be rotating, collapsing. We've seen both top laners especially use their teleports exceptionally well in this game as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's just a thing where you kind of have to expect that's going to happen. And yeah, when the team fights run long, you have to be careful because everyone kind of goes and says, oh, I find we're getting out. In fact, this bread buff getting contested. Good steal there. We'll go. In fact, Bobo is going to get stunned potentially. He needs a couple more procs. Jace dives in there with two of the skies and hammer form. There's the stun. And that's an easy kill coming through. He's now Rengar going to dive in on top as well. Zuna on the side is trying to kite Moon. It was taking far too much damage. And Young Glory able to clean up yet another kill. A two for zero there. And maybe even going to look at this dragon. I thought a little bit low with the Zerath ultimate coming back up. Yeah, they really Really don't want to deal with that zero <laughs> that that would be such a big mistake going in for that dragon and dear god like i just i don't know what to say these these team fights are really going back and forth as usual every game it's been that way and now oh, i don't know about that one rengar <laughs> I don't know. a uh -oh. little risky but yeah ambitious still oh, he's actually okay yeah he's able he's to help himself off okay I just Ooh. taking his own buff. I actually thought it was an invade for a second. Realized he was on the, the right side of the map, so he'll be okay. And a very generous donation there from Rango off to his mid laner there. So Jace going to be happy with that buff. Tear stacking up there as well. Chalice oh. uh, for Zareth as we move through some of the items. Jace going to go in though. Equalizer does pop down. That was a very cute gang there from the yeah. Rumble. And there's an easy kill for Corky. Three man mid. Someone didn't call MIA. <laughs> Report this top laner. I mean, really. <laughs> uh, this has been such an amazing game. Game. Like these top laners, honestly, it feels like they're omnipresent because of these TPs. They're all like, if you're in a 3v3, you think you're just in a small skirmish, you always have to expect and just imagine the top laner already in that fight because the moment you start it and the moment you commit, there that TP is going to come down. It's just going to rain from the sky and suddenly they'll just be a, a fat rumble ready to welcome you. And it's one of those things as well because people always joke that top laners and Hunter's Bobo are going to get jumped on now as well, sir. Getting a little aggressive with Unbreakable, but Bobo's Caitlyn looks solid in game one, looks fine here as well as he just farms thing up here. A couple CS here ahead of Corky. In fact, CS looking good for VT as we mentioned earlier on, but the gold lead pretty much nothing here, about 200 gold for VT, if that here. And I think that first dragon fight is going to be a whole lot of fireworks, which it's always often the case in these games. But Young Glory, they've had Rumble every single game. You mm. have to feel like that those mid-game fights might be in their favor. Yeah, these Rumbles... Like the rumble picks in general have always been honestly the the smartest. Um, they've committed to it, and that means they've just committed to a stronger team fight. But of course, they have Nar, and Nar this game is it's quite debatable. Like if Nar can get in, like we've seen Flandre on Nar, and if you can like he can just solo carry the team just by alt, like just by go coming in in Mega Nar form, just swiping the team away into the wall. It's just. It's amazing what you can do, the possibilities with that champion, if played correctly. Yeah, and Carry looking good here so far, just kind of farming here up against Start pushing him back towards that tower, just being so irritating with that high point. Down the bottom here, Winter's Bite does just go wide there as Bobo and Moon will dash out of the way. And we're kind of settling in for a bit of a uh, quieter game, interestingly enough. We think we had 8 kills at 8 minutes in the last game, something like 13 kills in 10 minutes in game 1, but everyone's just kind of farming up, playing a little safer now. They've gotten all the way here to game 3, and we mentioned mm -hmm. VG's early games looking strong, just in general, and Young Glory really looking strong in the mid-game, and VG's Late game in game one looked great. Have to feel like this sort of game, at least right now, favors VG just based on A, how they've played, and B, the team comp they picked up for themselves as well. Again, very rumble centric team here. Yeah, definitely. It's the most unfortunate part, what's happening right now, is that YG hasn't really deep warded the backside. There is a blue ward right now behind them in the river. So it opens up like right now, NARS TP is up. At any point, you can expect a gank to, to come down. It all oh, looks like a a massive fight's being prepped. We'll see how this works out. Oh, God. Got some friends rotating through the jungle. Oh, he does manage to dodge most of the members through YG there as well. And he'll be okay. Just kind of wandering back through. All Good right. defensive pink blood there, actually. And unfortunately, no fireworks. So oh, well. All right. There's, there is a <laughs> dragon fight coming down. So there's no ward on it for Beachy's side. I guess they won't really want to. Yeah, they won't contest that at all. Yeah, don't really want to fight the Rumble. Anyway, both TP's up after the top lands, but Dragon will go down there. 11.52 now. 
as Dragon did go down pretty swiftly there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think VG in general are pretty happy to give that up. I mean, the gold lead now here for YG, almost 2,000 gold. Is back. Bobo going to get aggressed on Corky going deep here. Good ult there from Brawl, but Kha'Zix is dodged in. He's come around, snuck in with the ultimate, and now he's right on top of Sir, but he gets away and a good trade there back and forth. But nice from Young Glory to dodge that gank here. Elmi, once again, really smart, really just precise, elegant player to watch, but he just cannot force things oh, to on Lucian, it seems carry. like. Oh, carry. He carried. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, All right, I didn't no see that. that. No, nope. mm-hmm. I'm looking away from the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that was just embarrassing. I, I'm pretty sure he's like the moment he communicates, or if there's a team fight that's going to be like communicated, is like, all right, go in and ulti. He's like, I, I don't have it. It's like, wait, wait, why don't you have your ult? It's like, ah, you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's even funnier as well because Nah has to also transform to use his ultimate, so yeah, there's even more. There's even more silliness where it's like, yeah, I don't have it. Why? You're Megan It's like, no, no, I, I, I don't have it. This <laughs> carry here actually could be a trouble start. <laughs> Missing that second harpoon, but Rengo's going to come in, dodges the bowler with the hop though. Now Elmi going to rotate in. In fact, there's a lot of hyper damage coming from this mini now. Rengo might want to be careful. Does boomerang in, but not quite enough to close the distance. There is we'll just calm things down there in the top end. And again, six kills in 30 minutes. I feel like we've changed sides. This is not a Chinese League of Legends game anymore, man. Where's the bloodbath we saw in the first two games? Oh, I guess God. they they more than they more than made up for kills <laughs> yeah. in the first two games. Maybe they're taking it easy now. Yeah, they they're playing a lot more. I wouldn't say scared, but a little bit taken aback, a little bit more conservative, just because they don't want to make that one mistake that'll cost them the series. Because this is so important. This is the difference. Of course, they have the lower bracket, but this is the difference between going into the LPL and not. So. This would be a great chance if they're able to win it right now into the winner's bracket. Oh, actually, here comes again from Amy. Kha'Zix actually just going to rotate in. Carries in a really nice draw. Baiting start in. But there's more people here for VG as well. Four-man gank as the bind will just miss. Does nail it, actually. The stun went wide and there was nowhere for start to dodge. Almost gets a kill onto Elmi to clean things out as Boba's getting aggressed on in the mid lane. But that's an easy kill with four members of VG up towards the top. A good answer for Young Glory. They take out the mid turret as well with some good pressure onto Boba. Rengar's actually coming through. Maybe he can look for a dive on this tier two, but never mind. And YG, that's a good trade there. In fact, they will know. Might not even lose this top turret. Ouch. I just, I'm not, this is actually really well done by YG. They committed four people to the top lane. That is as amazing as it is, just thinking about it. Oh, wait, actually, this here comes down a fight. Uh Uh-oh. Bobo could be in trouble here. They're going to dive in, but a good soul shackles keeps him out. Beautiful dodge to the skies. They're actually flash out from under it, and Elmi going to dive back in. There's a great bite from Moon again, but a good brawl mop. Never mind. Zareth going to clean that out as Meganar gets the kill onto Rengar as well. And three for zero all of a sudden. YG's great tactical play undone by the brute force of Vici Gaming. Yep, and once again, Elmi uh, is just taking this game and making it his own. This isn't Vici game, this is Elmi gaming. This is, <laughs> this is... What? As silly as that sounds, I actually might agree with you here, especially after this series as Bobo now going to get aggressive. Dodge that from under Corky with the net though, and we'll be okay. Kind of probably wanted to go back and shop. Anyway, Trinity Force actually completed there for Corky. Likely got Infinity Edge on the way for Caitlyn as well. Athene's finished up there for Zareth as well, plus the Blasting Wonder. Everyone just kind of powering up, but nothing too major at this point in terms of items. So it's pretty standard here as we just tick past 15 minutes and 31 seconds. Yeah, this is this is quite the game. Oh, God, the suspense is killing me. This is worse than so, a M. Night Shyamalan movie here. <laughs> so I think, given that we do have a bit of a slower game here, we actually have a bit more time to kind of analyze what's going on. Good donate there from Elm. We will give the blue buff. Oh, never mind, Zahn. Boss to use the heal there. Sir's going to go in. Flash forward there from Corky. Good slow. Not enough, though. And Jace will clean him out again. And Zune again. He got caught out quite a lot in the Zillion, but that didn't matter nearly as much. What a binding, though, onto that Corky. Not enough follow-up damage. That was moved like... Team, where are you? Come on, guys. <laughs> come on. Now, Carrie going to chase in as well. TP will come in, though, for a start. And Carrie's going to have to hop over. Does hop out as Megan R. So she managed to have that cooldown back. Good biting again to prevent Start from coming in. But YG are really putting pressure on this map. Again, the goal is actually in VG's favor. But YG have really played forward in the last few minutes of this game. And this is how they won the last game. Listen, even they were ahead, but they just looked so aggressive despite the lead not being that particularly significant. Yeah, even though they were in a disadvantage, they just felt like they had the swagger of being in the lead. They just, they always, always pressed the, the game, even when it felt like, honestly, that it didn't seem viable for them to be able to do so. But it, uh, anything is possible for this team. It's just, mm-hmm. Yeah, if we are going to have a slowed down game, like you mentioned, who yeah. do you actually think has an advantage? Because I 
think I like Young Glory in a slightly slower game here. Yeah, definitely. I would go with Young Glory as well. It feels like the fast pace kind of always in your face style is Amy's. And if they don't if they slow him down, like it seems like they are, he doesn't provide much in the sense of like real hmm ward pressure. Like all of yep. his yeah, he just he just goes all in on the damage. He doesn't really do much in in that sense. And that's where I feel like YG is a lot stronger. Uh, I think I agree. And just the other thing as well is that Vici, if if with such an aggressive jungle, we've seen Elmi and Carrie actually both go in very aggressively for that team and really be those big initiators. It's so awkward to me that you'd pick a call like Caitlyn Zareth Morgana and yeah. Want to team fight all the time and get picks because this is very much a siege comp. And VG have not been able to sit in a lane poking and sieging with their Caitlyn pretty much since this game started. Now, YG gonna force yet another fight around this dragon, and there's not a whole lot they can do. They're gonna maybe look to steal it. Rengar, though, with a beautiful smite, will clean it out. But Carrie's gonna rotate in good boomerang, hops away as well for the slow. They're gonna try and get the flank on, sir. Actually, uh, stand behind me into a dark binding, but uh -oh. he'll get out. He's Carrie should be able to get in. This would be a perfect. Ooh, great ultimate! Great bomb ultimate down there as well with the ultimate. Great AOE coming through, but Zareth gonna get a kill. Caitlyn in there as well, and Carrie with a huge Nar ultimate in Mega Nar form cleans house there four for one with Jace. Kind of left back towards his tower, wondering what happened. <laughs> Beautiful fight there from Vici the Gaming. Rage bar. They really need to t pay attention to that rage bar because of Carrie knew, and when, the moment he was at half rage, he was just trying. VG was trying their hardest to stall out that fight just so Carrie can really get to that point in which he can just ulti the entire team fight. And that was what happened. Like the moment they were able to get that to that point in the game, like, look at this. Look at that. Jeez. That was just disgusting. That was. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Four men are out there and just plenty of AoE to follow in. I mean, the equalizer was nice. They kind of tried to cut off. Uh, the rest of VG from coming in, but that was actually really tactically well played by VG. They approached from three different sides to close out that perfect fight and set up that Nar ult. And that's that's something that comes with a lot of team experience. That's not an individual player just playing yeah. well. You know, Carry was... sure, right place, right time, had his ultimate. Uh, yeah. But that was set up really well by VG. That was beautiful. That was a beautiful, beautiful team play. And that's honestly what's VG's like greatest strength here is their team play. Because they knew they had to, they had to stall that fight out for Carrie to be able to get his ultimate and just like to wreck face. And you know what happened? Moon's Moon binded uh, the Brom. Oh, and here comes another team fight actually. Uh, not even a team fight, just a pick. Oh. Always going in. Zareth not going to come through. That's just enough to clean him out. This is a cue from Zareth. We'll get that kill. And this is the, where the fun starts here. And I think why VG might like playing with Zareth. You have an aggressive jungle that's constantly looking in the enemy jungle for fights. Zareth can follow up so easily with his long range that it's kind of like you have a semi-global ultimate. Yeah, definitely. It's Oh, man. It, this is such a treat to watch. I really want to see more of Amy because... The Kha'Zix pick is proving to be really flexible. Not Maybe not as flexible as the Lee Sin, but once he gets a kill, he's just going to be going uh, back and forth and back and forth in a team fight with his resets and jumps. So, whew, whew I'm getting, getting tingles here, man. And, and luckily for you and everybody else, no matter what happens in this last game of the best of three, everyone's going to get to see more Elmy because he'll be playing more. Both these teams actually have some games to play, but they would love to continue on. Let's move to the second round of the winner's bracket and uh, see what they can get done here. But VG have found some really nice fights. That even the gold way back up. It was at about 2,000 there for YG. You had a decent lead kind of chugging along, and all of a sudden we're pretty much dead even between these two teams here. 11 to 17 kills, I believe. 2 to 2 in turrets, but VG, if they find more fights like that, Young Glory are going to struggle to win even with the Rumble and all this great poke and team fight that they have. Yeah, and just to really take advantage of the downtime that we're having here, can I talk about like how how amazing the tournament structures are have been in China? Like, other than the best of one like round robin that we saw in the TGA, like it's it's perfect. And double elimination is just on like a tr great treat that we rarely tend to find in like esports right now, or at least yeah, specifically I mean in league. 
Yeah, I mean, no one is complaining that we have to watch more League of Legends, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not going to complain that they have to cost more, and I don't think any of the viewers are going to complain they get to watch more as well. So we do see VG now defending their top turret out from Young Glory, who are trying to get their poke and siege on with their Jason friends. But again, Zara thought going to defend in. Just a bit of poke there under that Jace, who did find himself caught under that turret. But yeah, just pretty chill so far. Maybe Carry can wait for that rage to build up and go in with an ultimate. I bet uh, Start is feeling a bit left out as this is a game of just, or at least at this point, it's just back and forth projectiles just flying at each other. And it's like, well, uh, Rumble's like, well, I have a projectile too, but I don't, I don't think I want to use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. He gets to join in with that. Carry ultimate. dodging in. In fact, they're going to take the tower out first this time. But there's the equal. That's a great flash, though, from somebody. Does get popped by the Winter's Bite. So we'll get some moon. Flashing forward in and trying to get aggressive cards to crown the side. Dives in with the AoE, and there's the Zerath on top. Organa gets the first kill. And when we try to get into the reset, he's popped back over the wall. Nah now is going back in as well. Slow, that's the second kill. Picking up Corky there as well. Moon very low. elmi has got to be careful. Bobo aggressively forward. Now he's got the most health actually tanking for his team. They're going to look for a bit more. Is revealed in that brush. There's the reset. Going to get the slow in there. It's a beautiful single voice back there. Ringo goes down. Five for zero there for VG. And another beautifully played team fight. Oh, I don't know if this is uh, the right idea here. Oh, come on! Are they gonna? Okay, they're gonna decide against it. It was like <laughs> that was that would be the highlight battle of this game. If they decided to go uh, for Baron at, <laughs> at that point. That would be a true raid boss. But that was that was so perfectly played. That coordination in the team fight. Only going in for the resets with in coordination of the AOE coming down from both. Carry and uh, the Zareth with Zun. This was just beautiful. It was just a nicely played, like just it was. It was a nice art piece that was crafted there. Sam. Yes, <laughs> I'd love to credit Zun's Zareth play here a little bit more as well because he has just been such. He might have the best land, especially against a champion like Jace. But his team fighting has been on point with his Zareth, and I think the biggest difference is he got caught out a ton on Zareth just with YG being aggressive on their half of the map and just taking whatever chance they could. Because when you get caught as Zareth, you can't really get away. But when he's in prime position doing damage, he just spills out so much magic damage, it's not even funny. And VG, man, you said it. They're playing team fights absolutely flawlessly so far. Ooh, and it looks like while VG is looking for a possible dragon, they have to back away at the possibility of a Baron dance here. What are they possibly going to do there? They have to contest it, but it looks like it's just being baited out because there are no wards from VG. Hmm, yeah, they, they decide against it, but a team fight might start with Rengar ulti going up. I think they're okay with what's happening, they're trying to maybe kind of push the mid lane here, but we'll just kind of dot back and forth, see what happens. Vici Gaming moving very quickly towards this tier 2 turret, we'll get it. Rengar, as you said, looks like he's popped the ult, so going to be wasted it seems like, unless he yeah, jumps on someone in a few seconds. And yeah, Vici can't get anything done, but no real fear here with Rengar ultimate down. And uh, Rumble Ulti also Equalizer came down just so they can protect that tower. I guess they really wanted to do that, and they they lost both Rengar Ulti and Equalizer. So they definitely, I don't, I don't think they want a team fight now, but yeah, it looks like they're going in for that free tower in the top lane. Yeah, lost the Dragon as well, so they'll give up that, but they might be able to trade here in the top, as you mentioned, and get the Tier 2 turret. It looks like VG Gaming will not be back in time to defend. does go down very quickly with the Jace and the Corky. That's one of the nice things about Jace. Really augments his double AD carry compositions and plows through towers. In fact, VG might look for a fight here as Morgana's actually come back, run back with the mobility boots there as well. But it looks like they'll just have to play it patiently, try and get some vision back around Baron, get vision of the left-hand side of the map. They did lose quite a bit of it as YG would really darting around the Baron area. And they're going to reset once again here. VG again with their lead, taking things very slowly, I have to say. Yeah, definitely. And it's just what they want to do, uh, or at least YG would love a slower game. Um, Yin Fu, is, uh, the jungler for YG, is actually playing quite phenomenally. And I bet he would love to, the old Rengar and being able to push down towers quite quickly, That just to, like, <laughs> just to work well with the rest of his laners here. But nope. He has to deal with the deal with what he has. 
Just kind of charting what's going on. Again, a little bit more downtime here in this game, which is not what we expected coming into this series, given how we started things off as well. But items are coming out across the board here. Two item spikes for both AD carries. We've got Trinity Force last Whisper there for Corky, along with Static Shift plus IE for Caitlyn. Rabbit on Seth Cap plus uh, Athenes, and half of the Void stuff finished there for Xerath as well, with Jace pretty much a similar build here. Last Whisper more Romana and his Brutalizer going with his cooldown boots. Jungle, item, jungle items have been completed as well. Riggle's Lantern for Rengar with Spirit of the Elder Lizard for Kha'Zix. And just items here for both the top laners with tank items coming through with a Hex Drinker plus a Randy once with looks like maybe another uh, Thornmail potentially coming out for Nah and the Leandrews and now almost the Zonis with the Need to See Larger picked up there for Rumble. So everyone very happy here. 27 mm. minutes, uh, just about 27 minutes. So this fight's going to be quite close if they happen. Yeah, and once that um, Sonya's does come down for the Rumble, it will be quite the power spike. He'll have a little bit more maneuverability. He can really just jump into a fight without really a, the fear of getting bursted down. They'll have a lot more flexibility in these fights. That's going to be something to look forward to. Yeah, just again, just got to be careful here. No team wants to make a mistake and have one botched team fight make everything so much harder. And VG still holding on to a decent lead, but it's very static at this point. We've been at the three to 4,000 gold lead. Pretty much the entirety of this, the last 10 minutes or so. So everyone's just kind of hanging out and uh, trying to take the next objective. Could have Baron maybe is the thing that really tips things over. But we'll have to see here again. VG need to find a way to win this game. In fact, Young Glory kind of doing the same thing here. And in terms of win conditions for us, what can you tell me about the team composition specifically with the way these two teams have drafted for our last game? Yeah, definitely. It looks like what YG wants to do and what they're successfully doing is they're creating a lot of pressure in these maps because... Right now, Rumble is at a position which he can... Oh, but he might get caught out here. Okay, yeah, it only doesn't want to fight that. But yeah, Rumble's at a position in which he can split push and just get to that point in which he has. Now he will probably go back and get his Zonias. So they want a team fight. And with Mur uh, Muramana on Jace, they will be able to poke so effectively with Corky, uh, Jace, and of course the Rumble, just to uh, ulti, just to like put the cherry on the cake this is such a really smart composition and sometimes you got to question some uh vici's comps but they have it work out sometimes and i'm not exactly sure if it's just because of the comps are okay or if it's just elmi making use of whatever he has available because they're doing so well like he's comboing so well off of these zerith ults and these zerith like this the aoe that's coming out yeah, I almost kind of joked about it before, but it's uh, it's pretty funny that the Chinese just have very different draft evaluations than the rest of the world, it seems like. And I, my joke was that it's like a team fight comp with a poke sub team built in. That's kind mm -hmm. of what we got going here. So I'm curious to see if either team really opts into a full siege or if maybe looks for a split between fight. Never mind, we've got trouble in Paradise here as a rumble. It does go down defensively, trying to move Carry out of the way. He's actually now Megadar, but... They will not chase him. Organa got low, but no one dying there. That little exchange, 29 minutes, 24 seconds, and still trying to find a way in. This is an interesting build from Nar, actually. He went in for the early GA. Once he was able, once he got his armor down, once he got the... Um, I, yeah, once he got his tankiness, or what he felt was really nice, he went for the GA. That means he'll have a lot more freedom to do what he just did there, where he just, like, attack, just go in, go in and melee like range too <laughs> on like on mini nar and just not be afraid to die because he has so much basically he has two bars of health on him <laughs> like as much as you don't see it because once he dies he can come he still have the rage bar and he'll be able to come in just like tank so much so the next team fight that comes down for this team they should have the advantage and it'll be interesting to see how they use that all right, so again, can continue the dance around this Baron VG currently with the vision advantage, having a pink ward plonked firmly into the into the entrance of the Baron pit there, but just kind of dodging around. Poke does come out, Winter's bite pop there for Braum, but we'll be okay for now. And again, YG have really just been happy to relax here in mm -hmm. this game. It's it's funny to me from they're a team that seems to win very decisively when they win team fights here, but 30 minutes and 38 seconds now. This game is dragging on. I think it might be longer than game one. I mean, game two ended so quickly with how YG just ended those team fights. But when they don't find a way in, it seems like they kind of arm and arm and dirtle a bit and can't quite figure out how they want to win this game. Yeah, definitely. It kind of feels like YG is constantly looking for a solution, kind of like looking at a math problem or something. The moment they find the answer, like kind of like last game, the moment they found the answer to the game, 
it was just like it was just like that. They ended the game in just about ten minutes of notice. Like you couldn't have tell, told me ten minutes before the minute, like ten minutes before how the, the game, game ended, ended. That it ended, yeah. Like that it would like end in their favor because it was just so fast how they were able to take the game so you never know like this game in the next five minutes it could just be gg like it's and I, just and as I, simple as that yeah and i think again yg are just happy with the game being at this kind of pace vg it feels like with the way the a the fact they have a lead but just how the comps kind of play out as well that they're the ones that want to be proactive here they've got options they're going to send carry actually now down towards the bottom lane to split push Kind of respecting that option there as well. And they've got plenty of options. That's one of the funny things about drafting, you know, I guess a funky way, shall we say, is that you're going to put a lot of options. It might not be the most focused team comp in the world, but you have a lot of different things you can do. You just can't do all of them that well. But VG, sieging up this tier 2 turret, this is basically a free turret, though. Nobody ever wants to defend the tier 2 turret in the bottom yeah, lane. They're pretty happy. They, they don't care all too much. They're, they'd rather just let it go than to sacrifice their lives for it. Um, this is, although as much as I like complimented the GA, it's extremely risky in the sense that, oh, actually, it looks like YG will go in for the Baron. That's not even warded. Oh, but they do know what's happening, though. Speaking of extremely risky, Baron does get started up. And they're oh, going to come wow. in now. YG's Baron damage is actually pretty immense, but they are going to teleport in now. So maybe this could be what they want carry. Not quite in Mega Knight. It's going to poke back and forth with the boomerang. Sir, potentially caught out of position. Could Jukes here from carry, but. YG just going to back straight off that Baron, and VG don't really have options. I think they were hoping to be able to start a team fight there, but Young Glory kind of bait them in, waste that teleport there from Carry, cut off the potential split push ups and options, and just back away towards the base. They are playing very casual, very, very relaxed League of Legends right now. Yeah, and losing that TP is pretty vital because once Rumble is able to regain his, they can play. They can go back into playing that split push game, but it looks like Baron will be the point of contention again. Oh, what will happen? Unsurprisingly, here? in a Chinese game of League of Legends, <laughs> when the game is stalemated, Baron is the decider here. As we do have VG actually starting up around the area. There's clearing out wards. The Young Glory going to run down as well, defend where they can. And we're going to have a long battle for vision here, potentially, in this game, because it's very, very important to make sure we get that all done. 33 minutes and 30 seconds. And YG now going to pummel down the mid lane. I think they're like, you know what? We should maybe use our Pokemon Ooh. for poke here. Oh, when the fight starts. Well, will indeed here. Tower does go down. Moon going to go in though. Does get knocked up. And there's a good ultimate. Boba though off to the side doing well, but they're just diving in there as Jace gets the tower and the double kill. Carson cleans out Corky. Elmi's in the back trying to do, going on a solo mission here. 1v4. And now Boba going to chase in. It's, oh, he ordered a ward. I don't think it matters here. He does get slowed off here. Get almost killed by the Jace poke there as well. Elmi with a good dodge of the Winter's Bite, but a one for one trade there is not quite what either team wanted. Definitely not, but they're going to go in for the Baron right now. I'm not sure if I agree with this decision, but depending on how much damage Zoon can do, this this could be very viable. Here comes here comes Yan. Oh, well, here comes Yin Fu. Can Yin Fu get the? Yeah. No, he can't. There Gotta goes be the careful. Baron. They are going in. The Baron does go and down the there. The one will smite it through. And now it looks like Rengar going over the top. And only though wants to jump straight in into Rengar. Doesn't even need the game. And ultimately, Zareth gets that. Now Braum's being chased out as well. Rumble will pop. He's on his chase. Trying to jump into the boat, but he gets obliterated by damage, popping his GA. <laughs> Carry getting low as well. Doesn't even use his GA. Just missed times that boulder there, but doesn't need it. As Amy, I, 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 uh, Amy, Amy. gets the kill there as well. Yeah, he's pretty good. Oh, he's going in again. Never mind. Yeah. Start now. <laughs> going to come through the Hexdrinker pops. There's the ultimate for Caitlyn. Does pick up Rumble. Carry going to jump in there. So hops through there. Gets the kill there. GA will pop in there as well. Zero thoughts we're going to come on top. Brom dodges the last few hits of that ulti, but he's still quite low. Moon's going to try and hunt him down. Someone get a tower, please. I was going to say, VG could just take the towers, but they're chasing <laughs> down. Looks like so we'll get out there on that Brom. But VG, man, they have broken the base, and they're looking so strong to close out this best of three. They could have ended this so easily if they just have focused on this tower. They could have done it. Maybe they still can. Possibly Jace will be up. Okay, they, okay, they can still do it. This is still... Oh, my goodness. VG Gaming. Oh. And kind of just, just like the game two ended. One team fight and that's it. Amy is just so good, man. Oh, VG. my. VG yeah. have a great jungler and they play damn well together. I think I'm going to set up the shrine right now. I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> I think it's set up, dude. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. I think I think you. I heard you constructing it between games two and three. Yeah, yeah. It's almost. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 almost, it's hard. I 
I can't disagree that he's played phenomenally on champ and three different champions as well, by the way. Three yeah. fantastic performances. I mean, it feels like game one was his best and game three was probably his second best, but still showed incredible incredible competence on multiple champions. Played them all superbly and just man, VT are a great team to watch because they team fight so well with a very aggressive top lane and an even more aggressive juggler. Yeah, the only criticism, like, this is how damn good this man is. Like, the only criticism we had was the fact that his, like, the champion that he played was limiting his ability. <laughs> like, the fact that, like, he pick up Rengar and it's like, well, I guess he can't do all too much. Like, it, like, like he can't engage when he wants to, which is basically all the time. He, he's limiting <laughs> himself, like, by two minutes, one minute, like, on his ultimate ability. To be able to do all that much, and it's just so, it's so exciting to see this team. Before it was a little, I was holding myself back, I didn't think this team would do it. I didn't think this team would be able to take out YG, but guess what? I was wrong, and a lot of people were wrong about this team. And, well, yeah. Oof. A long road ahead, though. That's 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 round two now. VG will continue up in the upper bracket. Young Glory will drop down to the losers bracket, and are continue fighting back there. But there are plenty of teams vying for summer spots in the LPL, and there are only four of the eight teams we have here that can go through. So that's a great best way to kick things off. We've got one more, guys. We'll be back soon. It is not two shins. It's just Energy Pacemaker versus Energy Pacemaker carries, guys. Pastry and Razzle Plus, and we'll be right back after a quick break. <laughs> 